everybody, welcome back. Do you remember I made a short a few days ago, maybe a week ago, where I showed you guys how I made pizza for dinner, but I made it with homemade mozzarella cheese? A lot of you guys asked me to do a video on how I made that homemade mozzarella cheese. So that's what today's video is gonna be. We're gonna be making some homemade mozzarella cheese. Homemade mozzarella cheese is a labor of love. It takes a good minute to make the mozzarella cheese, but it's really easy. It takes a long time, but it's easy. I know it, it, it's kind of contradicting itself, but really it is easy. It just takes patience and you just gotta keep doing a couple things. After a good minute, it's there, okay? It just takes time, but it's easy. I'm gonna show you some things that you're gonna need for making homemade mozzarella cheese. One batch of homemade mozzarella cheese, you're gonna need one gallon of whole milk. And I like to sit mine out and let it get to room temperature. You're gonna need a pot of some sort that has a lid. You're gonna need a thermometer because you have to keep an eye on the temperature of this. I use a meat thermometer. You can use one of the trigger thermometers that has a laser. You can use a candy thermometer. You just have to have a thermometer so you can make sure it hits that perfect temperature. Along with that, you're gonna need some citric acid. You can find this in your canning section usually. If you can't find it in the canning section this time of year, Amazon has it for about five bucks. Another thing you're gonna need is rennet. You can get rennet tablets. They look like this. Just like little tablets. I found these at my local Ingles. It was next to the gelatin mixes. Rennet. It's about $3 for a box of the tablets at my local Ingles. Or you could get liquid rennet, which I got this from Amazon. It was around $6. Um, I have vegetable based rennet. This is vegetable and these are vegetable based. You can get animal based rennet, um, but this was cheaper. So I got the veggie based rennet. They both work the same. You're also going to need a fourth a cup of salt. I almost forgot to tell you that. And you're going to need some water. Along with all of this, I would advise you to get gloves, some rubber gloves. If you are not used to touching hot things with your hands, um, I advise you to get silicone gloves so you can protect your hands. I'm used to touching hot things and I touch pans with my hands. So I'm used to it. So I just use rubber gloves. But if you're not used to hot stuff on your hands or you're very sensitive to heat, get some silicone gloves. That's all you're going to need to make mozzarella. You're going to need all of these items plus a little bit of time and patience. But when you do this, you will feel so good about yourself. It is so rewarding. It is so good. And you can be like, I made cheese. Like, who does that? Making cheese, that's crazy. And it's so easy. And you're probably going to absolutely love doing this once you get started. All right. Without any further ado, let's get started making our cheese. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my citric acid ready and my rennet ready. We have to put some water with all of these items. And I would like to have it ready because I gotta move kinda quick because I wanna keep that temperature where it's at. So first we're gonna get that ready. For the citric acid, just get a bowl and put in a half a cup of water along with one and a half teaspoons of citric acid. I'm going to let that get mixed together and just let it dissolve and set it aside. Set it next to wherever you're making your cheese. You're going to take four tablespoons of water in a bowl. Along with, if you're using the tablets, you're going to be using Two whole tablets. Plus three fourths of another tablet. Okay. 
if you're using the liquid rennet, use 0 0.01 ounce if you're if you have a kitchen scale. If not, um, it's probably around an eighth of a teaspoon. Just gonna make sure this rennet gets dissolved too, and I'm just gonna set it aside as well. Now you're gonna add your whole entire gallon of milk into the pot that you're using. Remember, make sure the pot has a lid. So we're just gonna pour the entire gallon jug of milk. There we go. We need this milk to be 55 degrees. So before I heat it up, I wanna test it. It's already 60 degrees because I let it sit out to room temperature. So that's good. <laughs> so now all we have to do is add in the citric acid and water that we mixed up. And we're gonna start heating this up slowly to 88 degrees. Don't mix vigorously. You want to just stir that citric acid in easy, by just pushing down a spoon or a paddle of some sort. We want it at 88 degrees exactly. If you think it's taking too long, it's okay. We don't wanna do this fast because it can get too hot. So we're gonna do it on medium low. Just remember to always keep an eye on that temperature. We're at 61 degrees, we've got a minute before we're at 88. Now we're at 68 degrees. Oh, 70, we're at 70. Remember, as bad as you want to, don't stir it vigorously. Just do this to get it mixed together, to get it heated thoroughly. Easy, easy. <laughs> Check out temperature. We're at 75, 76 degrees. If you see it starting to get kind of thick, like it wants to curdle, you're good. It's what you want to see. We're 82, 83, 84. We have reached 88 degrees. Remove it from the heat. We have removed it from the heat. It's 88 degrees perfectly. Now we're gonna pour in our rennet. Remember, do not stir vigorously. Just kind of push it down with a paddle or a spoon. Be gentle. Now, move it back to the heat. We're gonna heat this up to 105 degrees even. We have reached 105. Turn off the heat, remove it from the heat. You're gonna put the lid on and let it sit for 15 minutes. Let's pause for just a second. At this point, you're gonna pour in your fourth a cup of salt. Don't forget, fourth a cup of salt. It's been 15 minutes. So, get you a bowl of ice cold water. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna bring my cheese back over to the stove eye that we were using because we're going to turn the heat on low because we're going to heat this up you don't want it boiling what i do is just 
turn it to low and it heats it up because what it's going to do is going to melt that mozzarella cheese we made so we can stretch it out and roll it into a ball easier so boom. here it's going to look curdled and it's going to be thick a lot of people like to take a knife and cut it i don't do that <laughs> because you can do it with the paddle now, at this point, you can decide if you want a cheesecloth or not. It is easier with a cheesecloth, but it's messier with a cheesecloth. And you want to keep dunking that cheesecloth in the way that we made. So, I don't make as big of a mess. I just use my hands. I don't use the cheesecloth. So, what we're going to do, usually with one gallon... I make three medium-sized balls of mozzarella. And I am putting my ice cold water right here. So I wanna just take my hands. See that, that mozzarella that we made? It's gonna look like cottage cheese. It's not gonna look like mozzarella. That's okay. This is where the time comes in. You're just gonna start pushing it together trying to bring out all of that way. Now, like I said, cheesecloth is a lot easier. It's just so messy. It gets way everywhere. <laughs> so doing it like this can take a minute. But as you keep forming these balls and adding more mozzarella to it, it gets easier. I'll get you up close here in just a moment so you can see the consistency. I'm telling you, it's not going to look like mozzarella cheese. It's going to look curdy like cottage cheese. But that's okay. Just going to keep adding to this ball, letting some of the way drain. Now, just slowly squeeze it out. Once you think you can put the mozzarella cheese back into the way and let it sit without it falling apart, that's when we'll start on another ball. I'm going to add a little bit more of the curd to this ball. Squeeze out some of the way. This is a lot less messier than a cheesecloth. And you might think there's going to be a lot of stray pieces of mozzarella in here because it's just so curdy and it's loose. And you think, what did I do wrong? It's okay. It'll all go together in the end. I'm going to do a little bit more before I set this one down. And then I'll bring you in closer so you can see it closer. I think this is going to hold its shape pretty good. It's still really soft, but I think it'll hold its shape. So I'm going to sit it in the way and I'm going to start another ball. See how it looks like cottage cheese? That's okay. It's perfect. I'm just going to squeeze gently so some of that way comes out. See? And we're going to slowly add to, just like we did the other one.
Okay, I think it could hold its shape pretty good if I put it in the way. It's still soft. But I think it's okay. So we're going to set this one back down in here. And we are going to make another ball. It's usually three balls that I make. But just keep adding more mozzarella to each ball each time we pick it up. It is amazing how you see the cheese come together. It is honestly like crazy. Because you're thinking, how can that be cheese? And then all of a sudden it looks like mozzarella cheese. Okay, add some more. Now, a cheesecloth cannot do all of this for you. It can just get most of the way out of your first ball. After that, you've got to start doing this anyways with the gloves and hands. So, cheesecloth is only good when making mozzarella with this first balls that you're making. Okay, I think it's going to hold its own. Now, let's go back to this first ball that we made. It held its shape pretty good. I'm going to get some more mozzarella. It's just floating in here. We're going to form it to that ball we made. We're gonna dip it. You wanna keep it dipped in that way. Break it apart. Start squeezing it, folding it in on itself. You can you don't want this boiling, but you can see that it's starting to get a little hot, starting to smoke. Not starting to steam, not smoke. Break it apart. Put it in on itself. Now the water's starting to get hot. So this is the part where if you are very sensitive to heat, You need to wear silicone gloves. Go to another ball. Whoa! Just break it open. Turn it in on itself. Keep scooping for those rogue mozzarella cheese curds. one. I'm going to keep dipping because that heated up way is going to help form our mozzarella. The heated up way is going to help form our mozzarella. Pliable. Makes it stretchier. A 
Oh yeah, we're getting some stretch. I think this one's almost finished. The way I like to do my balls, I tuck it into itself like this. I keep dipping it. If it breaks, it's okay. Just keep dipping it and it'll be malleable. almost done let's sit for another minute and keep working these other two balls all right here's our first mozzarella cheese ball i'm going to put it in the ice cold water over here Here's our second ball. And here's our third ball of mozzarella. This is whey. You can do things with whey. You can feed it to your animals. Yeah. My hands are red, but it's okay. I'm used to that. And here's our lots of red cheese balls. Draw one off and show you. Boom. Mozzarella cheese. Not a perfect ball, but it's fine. It's homemade. Mozzarella cheese ball. Mozzarella cheese, boo. Come here, Buttercup. Try the homemade mozzarella. Mm, that's good. Thanks. Homemade mozzarella. I'll just let it soak in it, Ryder. Mm. That's good. That's really good. How do you store it if you don't want to use it immediately? Get you a bowl that has a lid, put ice cold water in it, and drop the balls of mozzarella in the water. Put the lid on it and put it in the refrigerator. You could also you could also store it in olive oil with herbs and it's really really good. <laughs> and that is how you make homemade mozzarella all by yourself. It takes time, but it's easy. It just takes time and takes a lot of handwork. <laughs> if you guys like to see this kind of content, give me a big old thumbs up. It's really fun to do lots of homemade goodies. And I love you guys. I'll see you next video. Remember, as always, be positive, be kind, be happy, and enjoy your mozzarella cheese. I love you, bye.